When I was the editor of Reason in the early 70s, we got an article that was submitted that proposed a method of converting the world to libertarianism. And that was by going door to door and distributing to every household a copy of Alice Shrugged. We rejected the article, and I, I never felt we did made the wrong decision. <laughs> but it just it was an example of the kind of impact that Rand has had and continues to have on many, many people. Rand is, I think, a very valuable uh, resource in the movement for people who take liberty seriously. We knew that if we did anything with Rand or about Rand, there was eggshells that we were, had, had to tread very lightly on. And we did have an idea, and I think, if I recall, it was Bob and Tibor, I think maybe more Tibor than any, who thought that we should do a special issue devoted to Ayn Rand. And in planning that issue, among the other letters that we sent out, I sent a letter to Ayn Rand, asking her if she, telling her what our plan was, and asking her if she would care to, would love to have her contribute a piece. And we never got a response, which really wasn't a surprise at that point in the, in the, uh, in the uh, history, because she was notorious for not responding to people. We uh, also sent a letter to her and her publishers about our plan to use a treatment of her likeness that was uh, from a photo that had been published and we, we were aware there were copyright issues. Uh, we never got an answer, and then I wrote and said that if we didn't hear again, we would consider that they had no objection to our using the photo. They didn't respond properly or otherwise. We, we uh, did our own take based on that photo. This is the cover that we used, and the date of the issue it was November 1973, special issue, Reason. This was a sellout. We had to do a reprinting of this issue, and we offered a free copy of this issue for new subscribers. That led to the, one of the more interesting sagas uh, with Ayn Rand and Reason, because we got a letter directed to us uh, from Ayn Rand's uh, intellectual property lawyers in New York. They demanded that we cease and desist from continuing to offer the back issue. They demanded that we turn over all existing inventories of our back issue over to Ayn Rand's lawyers for their destruction. And they said if we didn't comply, they were going to sue. They would take appropriate legal action. So I was a young, rambunctious lawyer and uh, practicing with a, a law firm called Kindle and Anderson, a mid-sized law firm in Los Angeles at the time, doing litigation work. Uh, and uh, I had done some defamation actions and had some familiarity with the subject area. And they had cited the New York Civil Rights Statute that made it uh, 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 illegal to use somebody's name or likeness for commercial purposes without their written consent. So the issue was basically the First Amendment issue, whether we had a First Amendment right to publish uh, uh, a, the likeness or information about a person who is in the public eye, a public figure, uh, without their written consent. And we thought we had a pretty good case uh, legally under the New York statute. And what's more, it seemed kind of quirky for Ayn Rand to take this position about confiscating our property that we had generated. So I made a telephone call to the lawyer that sent the letter from this New York law firm. And I introduced myself, and I said I was responding to the letter. And uh, we engaged on a, we had a basically cordial conversation, uh, during which I mentioned that I was surprised to get the letter, that uh, we really uh, didn't feel that we were the kind of target that Ayn Rand should want to go after. I understand there may be some hostile feelings that she might have about some of the articles and features we've run before, but uh, we're really, the, this, this, the issue that we're promoting uh, was very favorable, had been the subject of very positive response. And if, I, even if Ayn Rand didn't want to help us, the idea that she would go after us didn't seem to be appropriate, desirable, or even understandable. 
And I said, one of the things I'd like to do, I said, you know, if, if you want to file the lawsuit, I said, I would look forward very much to taking Ayn Rand's deposition because I'd like to ask her what the moral basis that she feels she has to confiscate our work product. I said, by the way, one other thing I have to tell you, I said, you know, up until now, the most interesting name I've ever seen for any case in the Anglo-American legal system was USA versus Richard M. Nixon. I said, this would top it, Rand versus Reason. <laughs> My regret was that I said too much, I feel, on the phone because we never heard from them again. <laughs> they let us alone. I never got my deposition. <laughs> so I learned sometimes you don't want to spell it all out too soon. <laughs>